Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today we're playing through part number three of Massive Darkness. And in the last video there were three things that were mentioned that I want to clarify right off the top before we get into the action. So just so that you guys understand where we are in the turn order, we had at the end of the last video completed the player's phase as well as the enemy's phase and we were moving into the experience phase. However, there's a couple things that happened that I, in, in these prior phases and prior turns that I want to correct before we continue on at the experience phase. So let's deal with those right now. You can find them in the pinned comment of the last video, but I'm going to go through these one by one. So the first one is that Whisper uh, didn't need to use uh, an action essentially to reorganize the inventory. So she didn't need to use an action in order to reorganize her stuff. She can do that freely when she picked up treasure. So that would mean that Whisper has an extra action to spend. Now, this guy wouldn't be as far as he would be uh, when Whisper was taking his, his turn at that time. This enemy would have been back further. So the only logical thing that I would have done at that point in time was to run into this room. Use, so I, I'd activate using a move activity or move, sorry, move action, which allowed me to move into one uh, space here and as well for my second point of movement, pick everything up. So Whisper is gonna go ahead and pick up the library key. So we've got the main objective in his hands, that, uh, or in her hands, sorry, I'm going to try to catch myself on that a lot, because uh, it is a female, and she's going to take the treasure, so two treasure chests, and we're going to reveal those treasure chests now, so here we go. First treasure, the charm of protection. Defense may reroll one of the attack dice one additional time. Wow, that's really good. That's going to come in super handy, when, especially with all these guys coming after us, and then we get to pull one more. And the Chainmail Armor card. Hey, that's not bad. Um, defense spams will give us plus one on defense. So guess what, guys? Uh, it looks like Whisper is going to be doing a free action, or this is like a free ability to allow her to go ahead and reorganize as soon as she picks up treasure. So we're going to go ahead and have the Leather Armor substituted out for the Chainmail Armor, which is a wise choice. And the re in terms of the rest of the stuff, well, there's not much else she can do because her action's done. If she wanted to try to transmute these and get a higher level card, she'd no need another action. She doesn't have it. She's already got everything she wants in her hands, <clears throat> I believe. But now that I'm looking at it, ooh, the greatsword's really good. It allows me to roll one red dice, but you'll notice it's dual-handed weapon. So that's going to kind of prevent me from doing that. I'd rather have both two yellows and one red, for now anyway. <clears throat> but there's some debate as to which is better. So that's uh, Whisper's note. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is uh, I missed the shadow ability on our wizard a couple times in the last combat, guys. And I want to make a note of that. And the reason for that is because uh, when uh, the battle wizard provide, uh, gets a bam, basically, off of... Now, where was it? I just got to try to find it again. Uh, oh, yes. So shadow mode skill... Uh, when you're when the wizard was in the shadows, which he was for the majority of the time he was attacking He was in one of these two spaces, which is shadows Which says it would be the attack would give me plus one bam every single time I attack and that plus one bam would have correlated to an extra sword meaning a majority of the attacks I made maybe not all of them, but some of them would have probably killed some of the uh, other individuals earlier on so we might have killed them earlier uh, than I did so I made it a little tougher on myself the wizard wasn't as bad as he truly seemed uh, he actually was pretty useful I just wasn't utilizing his ability as well as I should so that's something to remember going forward as we want to remember that in combat the last thing has to do with the battle wizard picking up all the treasure that he did uh, in that location right there but when he did so, I also get a free uh, ability to reorganize as I wanted to, and I went ahead and put the Armor of Life on him. I also want to put the Scepter on him, and the reason for that is it's a one-handed weapon which gives me a die in magic, and that just so happens to be exactly... We can carry, essentially, the Scepter and the Staff at the same time and get the benefit of both of the yellow dice when we choose to do a magic attack, which is really cool. So we've made him that much better. And now we're kind of squared away to where we should be as of the end of the last video. So what we're gonna do now is move forward to the experience phase, which we both know, or we all know, I should say, that uh, we've got four experience on both of the characters. So we need five in order to unlock the first abilities of these characters or even start looking at them. So for now, it's not gonna matter. Okay, so let's move into the event phase. Now this is gonna matter. So we're gonna pull an event card right now and hope that this is something good because the last two event cards have been uh, roaming monsters, which have made the dungeon extremely tough to get through. We got the Lightbringer's Protection. Inflict two wounds to one enemy in a shadow zone. That's 
No way. So this guy can't be hurt. Um, our, uh, our ogre mage cannot be hurt. And uh, the high troll can though, because the high troll's in the darkness. I will gladly put two damage on that high troll. So the high troll now has two hits against him. Now we need uh, 12 total to kill him. So that's a very small hit uh, against a really large individual. But uh, hey, that's better than having more enemies come out on the board. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, event phase. Now it's the end phase. So we're going to go ahead and take the first player token and move it over to our battle wizard who's going to start it off. So we have two individuals in the room. They're in two different spots at this current point. So the real thing comes to be how can we be, uh, make the most of what we have in our hands. Now uh, I have to activate my wizard first and it would make sense to not have the wizard be sitting right in front of the doorway because if I do so, he's gonna be, he needs to be able to attack with magic. So I can't, I don't wanna be in the same space as this. And I don't wanna get trapped in the same space as this guy. I wanna keep him away from me. So I want my wizard to be one further away. So he's gonna move back here. He's gonna use a move action to use one of his spent movement points to move back there. With his other one, um, he can only pick up things or, um, he can only pick up things or open a door. Both of which are kind of useless. So no, it, uh, yeah, there's not much I can do about that. So I'm going to move to there and I'm going to, now I'm going to probably use one action, my second action. I'm going to skip using the extra movement point because I have nothing else I can spend on that's useful. I'm going to use my second action to reorganize uh, my current loadout, or sorry, to trade is what I want to do. Trade with Whisper and you'll see why in a second. I have what here is the armor of life and it says I have defense and on those and whenever I get on the defensive bam, the hero may heal one. Well, the really cool thing that Whisper picked up was this wooden ring, which says you get a defense of an extra bam on your rolls. Now, the interesting thing with that is uh, I don't really need that on Whisper. This is more effective to be on Ilias because Whisper's, her abilities um, are just already good in terms of getting a bam, we already get an extra shield and we take away a shield if we're in the shadows, that kind of thing, we don't need this. So the trade action is gonna involve Whisper giving the wooden ring over to Ilias who can definitely use this, meaning every single time now that we do a defensive action, we're gonna get a bam, which then we can use to heal, which means we're gonna always be healing whenever we're attacked, which is awesome. It kinda of is a really good pairing for the two. I also wanna thank someone in the comments for pointing that out. Sorry, I forget exactly who it is off the top of my head. I had it in your in my mind for a second, but I forgot it. But I do wanna, I do appreciate that comment because that was a good one. So we've got that squared away and I have one action remaining. Now, the other thing that's kinda of tough too is uh, you know, there's some debate as to whether or not I should have, oh, let's see here, can I, hmm. it's tough, I mean, I don't really, I could have, hmm. no, I'm pretty happy with where I am right now, and trade-wise, I'm good, there's nothing else that I really want to do, uh, do I have anything that I can do to, Oh, I can teleport. Teleporting's pretty good. If I can get myself into a shadow space, I get uh, a bam on my attacks, um, which could then be used for extra staff damage. So maybe I actually want to get him out here. Sounds kind of dangerous, but maybe I do. And the reason why I'm thinking it might be a smart idea is because I have the armor of life. I also have this ability called teleport too, which allows me to slip right past enemies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my last action to move two to go to here. And that's gonna be the end of my turn. The next turn, my plan is to slip past him over here into the darkness and start taking shots at him or try to take this guy out. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting spread because at the end of the day, we're gonna to need to concentrate our efforts on both characters. Um, now I'm just trying to think if that's a smart move because if I move there, uh, I haven't attacked them. So there will be no counter attack this turn, but there will be uh, well, I guess Whisper will end up getting in here one two and then one and then have one attack So whiskers whisper is gonna be she's gonna be drawing a large majority of the attacks. So That should be safe. That should be safe So let's do that. Let's go ahead and have uh, That'll be uh, the turn for our battle wizard completely done and leave him uh, leave him there now We're gonna have whisper. She is gonna come running over here. So again movement action uh, to go one and two, and then another movement action to go into here. 
So she has to burn her second movement act or movement uh, point. I guess that's a better way to say it. Sorry, what I'm saying, movement action. So movement action allows you to spend two movement points. So I did my two movement points for one action, and then I'd be using, starting with another fresh movement uh, action, I'd be spending one movement point, and I'd be essentially burning the other one because now I'm in a room with a or tile with a monster area. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to attack it. And the cool thing is Whisper's actually in the dark now. So that's a good thing. Uh, when I'm in the dark, uh, the shadow, uh, my shadow mode skill is that they attack, when I'm attacking, the defender's gonna lose a shield. So that's good. So I'm gonna get that every single time. Everything else doesn't really matter. Uh, now the only other thing I could have done, actually you know what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go back like this, and I'm gonna spend an XP to use my sprint ability instead. It says spend one XP and make a free movement action. That way, when I move into here now, I've spent an XP to do that, I have two actions of attack against this guy. Just much more worthwhile to me. So now we're gonna take a look at what I'm fighting with. So I'm gonna be rolling, I'm gonna be using a long sword and a dagger for two attacks. On my blank results, I get a plus one sword. So there's lots of really positive things that could happen here. I get two yellow dice, but I am attacking the high troll, and the high troll gets a green and a blue, which are pretty pretty strong. And then we're gonna have to go down to dealing with all the crazy, uh, you know, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is all the uh, enhancements that are gonna happen after I go ahead and roll this. So here is the second action for Whisper against, uh, being a combat action against the high troll. Here we go. Oh, that actually worked out really good. So I ended up getting one sword, two sword, both of the uh, high trolls defense dies completely missed, which is awesome. Um, so it wouldn't have mattered. My, my shadow mode skill didn't even need to activate in the first place. I didn't get any bams, so that's not gonna help me. I didn't get any blank results, so that's not gonna increase anything. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me just take a quick look here. Charmer protection is for a defensive roll. So that's not gonna help me. So that is it. But guys, that's two damage straight through to the high troll. That's awesome. So no defense against that whatsoever. So now we have four damage and we need 12. We're still kind of rolling. So I'm gonna do this again and hope for good things. So second attack with Whisper. Ooh, much different end result there. So you can see uh, a lot of defense, probably more than I can handle. I only got two swords. Uh, so that's not good. Um, I can negate the, the shadow mode skill one of the shields um, in terms of anything else. Uh, I didn't get any bams or anything on my side. They got gems and the bams. So on the high troll side, uh, only the bams matter when it's an attack, but this is a defensive thing for him right now. So that's not gonna apply. Uh, so that's that's a moot point. So essentially, and the, jet, and the jewels I should say are also a kind of a moot point because the high troll doesn't have any. So uh, and what I say, it's diamonds actually, not the jewels. So bams and uh, diamonds. So essentially at the end of the day, easy block from the high troll and I'm not doing any damage. That's the best way to say it. So we're now at the end of Wisp. Uh, we're at the end of um, Whisper's turn. And now we're gonna have Whisper uh, have to deal with a counterattack. Uh, she has now made the high troll very, very angry and the high troll now is going to attack her. So he's using a yellow and red dice. So we're gonna take yellow and red dice. Now Whisper has a blue die from the chain mail, as you can see there on the bottom right, as well as a long sword blue die. So we get two blue dice. And we do have some abilities here, depending on if we get some bam rolls and things like that. We also have the charm of protection, which we can use to hopefully help us. So let's see how this goes. Oh, not very good. Okay, so the high troll got uh, four swords, uh, which is a lot. Um, and then if you take a look, uh, got uh, one bam. So again, only gets to activate that ability once unless it's otherwise stated as having more than one, uh, being able to be, a, uh, there's a certain term that has to be on the card for it to be a multiple, to be able to be used multiple times. So this is only gonna relate to a four, four swords plus one bam extra damage from the high troll. So that's gonna be five total. I only have, one shield so far. So that's essentially gonna block one. I do have the uh, cur the Charm of Protection, which allows me to reroll one of the attack dice, one additional, may reroll one of the attack dice one additional time. That's really cool. So I can just pick one of their attack dice. So obviously I'm gonna try to pick the yellow one because that would make the most sense. I don't want to reroll the red one. And only one sword this time, that's much better. Whew, Charm of Protection comes in pretty handy. 
Uh, do I have anything else that will help me? Uh, defensively, I didn't get any BAMs, so that's not going to be any good for me. Uh, nothing else matters right now. So essentially, three damage plus the one uh, for the enhancement is four, and I negate one. So that's three damage coming through to Whisper, almost killing her. Not enough to kill her, but almost killing her. So that's not good. Okay, I'm a little worried now. Um, so that's essentially the end of the hero's phase, and now the enemies get to activate. And that's the worst kind of situation because uh, we've got a couple enemies. Uh, whoa, this is going to be tough. We've got a lot of enemies around us regardless. We've got uh, attacks coming. So basically both enemies are going to be activated at this point. Uh, so we'll go ahead and activate um, the giant troll who's right next to me right away. So the first thing is it's the hero in range with the most XP is... Uh, the target priority, and as of right now, for range, um, the high troll is attacking with me uh, melee, so it's going to be it's going to be Whisper who's going to be taking the brunt of this hit. So the high troll is going to stay put and do an attack against Whisper. It's going to be a red die and yellow die like we talked about before. It's going to be blue dice, two of them. So we're rolling the same summer results. Remember, we still have um, the charm of protection for defense. May reroll one additional. May reroll one of the attack dice one additional time. That's really good. That's an amazing ability. Hey, we didn't even need to. So there's no BAMs, or there's no BAMs this time from the high troll. So I'm just going to wait for this to focus a little bit because it just went crazy on me. Uh, come on back, come on back. And no, it doesn't want to focus. Sorry, guys. There we go. So we basically ended up with this as a result of our dice. We had no BAMs whatsoever, so on, in terms of the attacking dice, so no extra damage, so just two coming across. I have two shields, I don't want to reroll anything, I'm quite happy with what happened. Uh, so it's a straight block, thank goodness, because otherwise Whisper would have been dead. Okay, so next up is uh, activating our uh, Ogre Mage. So the Ogre, Ogre Mage has really interesting abilities here, lots of stuff going on. So. Now this ogre mage can attack magic from a distance or melee. So basically melee doesn't really come into play unless of course uh, you get up and close and personal with it. Um, but if it's going to do um, anything, the first thing on its activation is to attack. So it's gonna obviously attack with whatever is in range. So that's gonna be magic. So he's gonna be throwing magic at uh, Whisper. So she's got some problems coming to her. Two yellow dice and a red die. And when using magic, doesn't get the benefit of the uh, lower axe that she's carrying either. So uh, we're going to be getting two yellow dice and a red die. This is nasty. I don't know how I'm going to survive this one. This, this could be bad news for me. And two blue dice for Whisper. So I need some serious fluky luck right here because this is going to be bad. So again, uh, when an enemy activates, it attacks first. Then it tries to, and if it can't, it moves. Attack tries to attack again, and if it can't, it moves one more time. But as of right now, it's within uh, two range, which is the magic um, ability range. So it doesn't need to move or do anything. It can stay put and take shots at Whisper, and that's why that is happening, sadly. Uh, oh, that's really good. So we got a sword, a sword, uh, a blank result. I got a blank result and a shield. Now, here's where things get interesting. No BAMs whatsoever were rolled. Now what's gonna, oh man, this is bad. Okay, so essentially one damage is coming through to me right now. That's the bad thing. The only thing that's gonna save me right now is the charm of protection. It says I can reroll one of the attack dice. So I would obviously try to probably reroll, my guess would be it makes sense to reroll the yellow one. There's only one face on the yellow one that's blank, whereas on the red there is one face. It doesn't really matter. So my odds are pretty much the same. I, I need to roll I need to roll a blank side. One in a six chance to survive, really, because if I don't roll this as a blank side, then Whisper dies. And uh, I don't want that to happen, but it looks like it might. So, yeah, there's really nothing else I can do about that. So, here we go. Hoping that the Charm of Protection can make this happen for me. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay, so there's the uh, there's the sword, and uh, that is going to be the blow. Uh, so the magic shot from the ogre mage was enough to wipe out uh, Whisper, which is not she's not happy about that. So she's down again. Um, I think she died. I don't remember who was the one that died last time. I think it was. Yeah, actually it was Whisper both times. I think so. That's terrible. Anyway, so that's resolved. So now all the enemies have activated and we're done. So now we're going to go ahead 
and move to the experience phase. And in the experience phase, nobody yet has crossed the five XP barrier to be able to buy uh, abilities, so nothing's gonna happen there. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead to the event phase and we're gonna pull an event card. What do we get? N no way, no way. We got the God of Light's blessing, fully heal one hero or resurrect and, he and heal to three health any dead heroes. This could not have been any better timing for this card. So basically what's gonna happen is we're resurrecting Whisper, so she's back, but in, and she actually goes back to three health. So it's not full health, but guys, that saved us using one of our life bringer tokens. So we got her back before the time phase, because it's, not the time phase, I'm thinking of Sword and Sorcery. Uh, before the beginning of the next round, it says the start of the round is when you normally have to pay that token to revive. Because we got that card in the event phase, she's up before we had to spend it. That's awesome news. So we get a little bit extra time there. That's amazing. Okay, so now we're starting fresh with a brand new round. And I think this is actually a perfect time uh, to stop the playthrough because I don't want to go too much further into it because uh, we may not get through a whole round cleanly. So hopefully you guys are enjoying so far. I really am. I think this is kind of tough because we have two... Um, roaming monsters that are not easy. One especially does a lot of pain from uh, melee range and the other one's kind of taking pot shots with magic from a distance. Uh, so both are nasty and there's really, n like, it's really a tough situation. So I'm really hoping in the end this all pans out uh, because this will be one of the funniest tutorials ever if I just get absolutely massacred in the very front section of this dungeon. But hey, this is one of the reasons why I think I like the strategy in this one a little bit better um, because you start having to think about the counter attacks in this one. Um, so a, a quick note just off the gameplay train is I guess what I'm thinking of is when you're talking with games like Zombicide, which is this is essentially based on and built off of. Uh, the thing I really like with this game is the idea that when you attack something, you anger it and it essentially attacks back with a counter attack. That's something you don't have to deal with in Zombicide. You just, you just, they spawn and attack. They don't, like, you're getting, you're getting that uh, that movement and attack happening when the uh, enemy's phase happens. So that's similar to Zombicide. But what you don't get uh, in Zombicide is the counterattacks. And that's why I think it makes this game really unique. Uh, and it's not just the counterattacks, it's actually the treasure looting style of things. Like going into this room here and finding three rooms full of that much treasure typically doesn't happen in a dungeon crawl that fast. Usually you have to wait until much longer before you get some good stuff. We've already got a bunch of useful items that start to create some synergies between the two heroes or between different items. So I really like that. Anyway, that's a side note. Hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough. If you are, give me a thumbs up. If you like what you see, please share with your friends. Let other people know that we're playing this game. And uh, again, 100%, give me comments down below if I saw if anything happened during the gameplay that you want to point out. And I will do my best to put a note in the pinned comments so that uh, others can see that when they watch the playthrough. Uh, I thank you for all your support. Until the next time, keep on rolling solo.